Barnaby Jones. Starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather. With guest stars Don Stroud, Donna Bacala, Lou Frizzell, special guest star Michael Burns. Tonight's episode, programmed for killing. Wonderful surprise. Well, that's what birthdays are for. Surprises. Candlelight, fine food. Special time for a special lady. I don't know when I've ever been so happy. Compliments of the house, Miss Kelso. I gotta stay in there tight with your father, right? Up and coming salesman like me can't be too careful with the boss's daughter, right? <laughs> You don't have to be careful with me. I'm sold. Fantastic. A satisfied customer. <laughs> and now for a very special gift. Oh. What? I've left it in the car. <laughs> well, go and get it. Don't go there. Mm -mm. Oh, can I help you, sir? Yes, sir. I just want to get something on my car. Thank you. you been? You were supposed to be here 20 minutes ago. Yes, sir. Uh, that's why I'm calling. I've been held up. Look, Summers, I don't want excuses. I want you down here now. You've got some tall explaining to do. I don't understand, sir. Oh, you don't? Well, I'll give you a choice. You can come down here now or you can talk to the police, whichever you like. Yes, sir. I'll be right there. Are you in the supervisor's office? Yes. I'll wait for you here. I'll be right there, sir.
Happy birthday, honey. May I open it? Of course, that's what it's for. Oh, Chuck. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. I understand it happened on your birthday. Uh, yeah, I had gone out to dinner with a, a friend. If he hadn't been with me when I got the news, I don't know what I would have done. You said your father had been very troubled lately. Yes, and that wasn't like Mac. I mean, not even when we, when we didn't have all of this. Did he ever say what was bothering him? Only that he had felt betrayed, that someone was knifing him in the back. Did he have any enemies? I've never known him to do an unkind thing in his life. He always said he was still just a day laborer at heart. My father was a very good man, Mr. Jones. Sometimes even a good man has enemies he doesn't know anything about. That's what has me worried. Of course, the police report said it was an accident, a malfunction of equipment. Believe me, I sincerely hope it was. But if it wasn't, I must know. You have every right to know. We call it the monster. I can well see why, Mr. Downey. It can move ten tons around, just like that. Miss Kelso says that her father seemed troubled lately. Oh, Mac was worried, all right. Look around you. Computer operated, efficient like clockwork. Sounds complicated. Not really. The computer does it all. Takes the orders, runs the machines, arranges shipping, accounting, even marks the bills paid. The only problem is the computer's been in operation three months and we're still losing money. What's the problem? It's always tough to figure with a new installation. Production schedules are right on the money. It'll come around, though. When it came to machines, Mac Kelso knew what he was doing. Shame he didn't know his uh, monster a little better. I don't get you. Well, just an ugly thought, the idea of one of his machines killing him. Any idea how this could have happened? Night watchman came running as soon as he heard the crash. The building was locked. Not a soul on the premises. By the time they had the fire put out, Mac was already dead. Mr. Downey, if anybody had been in the factory, is there any way they could have activated the crane from the floor, or bumped into a switch or something? No, the only control we have down here is an emergency shutdown switch. You see, the monster only accepts orders from the computer. Matter of fact, the way it all happened just isn't possible. Doesn't sound to me like that's a matter of fact. Mr. Kelso is dead. Nobody knows how or why. I'd like to see that computer if I could. Sure, you can if you want to. But we've had two experts going over it ever since the accident. I doubt if you'll even understand what they're doing. I'm kind of like the little boy at the peep show. Even though I don't understand it, I have to look. <laughs> I've been through these circuits three times. If there's a short here, I can't find it. You could use a break. Why don't you get some coffee? Yeah. Uh, you want some? No, thank you. Mr. 
Jones, this is Brian Elder. The Clarion computer people say that if he can't answer your questions, they can't be answered. Mr. Jones is a private investigator. He's looking into the accident for Miss Kelso. I'm afraid I have to get back to the line. If you need me, don't hesitate to call. Well, thank you very much. Oh, this is James Garcia. Howdy. How do you do, sir? Glad to meet you. Excuse me. Well, where would you like to start, Mr. Jones? Well, I'm sort of like the old me asking about marriage. Uh, questions are tougher to come by than the answers. <laughs> this uh, one box runs the whole plan. Hmm? No, no, not quite. Uh, that box is merely a terminal. The master computer is located in a very large building downtown. The uh, commands put in here relate to that master computer. And then by using information stored on Kelso program tapes, it responds by sending back the appropriate electronic signals to activate the system requested. Like the crane out there. Uh, yes, but uh, we provide Kelso with many other services as well. Automated assembly, accounting, shipping. You might say we run this entire operation. Hey, Brian. Looks like I get to keep my union card. Here it is. Oh, you found it, huh? I bet I looked at this B-14 circuit a dozen times and didn't see it. I just don't get it. Could I see that? Sure. But you see that bent connector there? It shorts the one on the other side. Hmm. Got a little mark on it. Looked like it could have been done with a tool or something. Oh, pardon me. Any idea how that could have happened? I'm afraid our lab people have to make that determination. Well, when they get all through with it, could I have that little gadget? Uh, Mr. Jones, that's something you'll have to arrange with my superiors. All right, I'll, I'll do that. Well, I'm much obliged to you gentlemen for your time. discovered that flaw in the terminal. You handled it beautifully. And you also heard about Jones, the private detective your girlfriend hired? Oh, sure. Listen, don't worry about that. I can handle Emily. She put me next to old man Kelso now, didn't she? Huh? Yeah. And if Jones finds out you killed him? Hey, I already told you, I didn't kill anybody. I set a machine in motion. I cannot be responsible for it if it went out of control. Chuck, you said this was just going to be a ripoff. I did not plan on becoming involved in a murder. Baby, it couldn't be helped. Kelso was going to nail us. I had to put a stop to it, right? I guess so. Hey, come on, baby. We both vowed by the time we're 40, we're going to be rich, right? Now, you have a few years leeway on me, but you don't want to see old Chucky boy in his dotage before I have a chance to put my feet up on the veranda in Mallorca. Now, do you? Mallorca? I thought we were buying a hotel in Tahiti. What, you don't like Mallorca? No, but what happened to Tahiti? What, do you want to make something out of it? Come on, put him up. Come on. I'll punch you out, I, man. I thought we were going to Tahiti. Hey, what's that? All right, okay. All right. Okay, okay, it's Mallorca. It's Mallorca, right? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> hey, you know something? I've always had good luck with guys with glasses. Boom. Huh? <laughs> hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you pick out all the broads. You know why? They go for your style. All innocence on the outside, but inside... Va-va-va-boom! <laughs> Hello. You fellas are a little lax with security, aren't you? Now, why should two legitimate businessmen like us worry about security? How are you, Mr. Goodman? Well, I'm fine. If you boys got the merchandise. Have we got the merchandise? Come on. Impressed. Very impressed. I think my overseas customers are going to be very, very pleased. Well, that's fine. Is this our money? Uh, well, if, uh, <laughs> if I can be sure there's no way to trace this stuff. Brian, tell him. Well, even if it were, there wouldn't make any difference. 
You see, every item here is covered by a paid invoice at Kelso Manufacturing. How did you manage that? Genius. Pure genius. My friend here can make a computer do tricks that only Einstein can appreciate. <laughs> it's not that difficult, really. Once I was able to break the Kelso programming code, it was a very simple matter. See, Chuck feeds in the orders from Ventnor, and the computer orders up programming automatically. Even, even handles deliveries. Yeah, with the help of a little gadget that my modest friend here built. But the most important thing is that the computer is signaled to recognize our bills as paid and print out accordingly. So within Kelso's automated accounting, the Ventnor account appears as any normal business transaction. Hmm. You're too modest. That is genius. Hey, this is only $100,000. Now, I know this stuff is worth at least $300,000. And when our trucks roll in here tomorrow, we will be picking up the other 200,000 in risk. Well, we had made plans. I know you made plans. Now listen, I like you boys. You're bright, you're clean, you haven't got any records. And you got a whole new angle here. Now, do you want to make some real money? I'm talking about half a million dollars. Sure. Then you bring me electrical components. All kinds, any kind, I don't care. That market is wide open. We'll do it. You can depend on us. Chuck, I don't know. Doesn't your computer handle Burleson Electronics? Yes, but it's an entirely different programming code. Brian, I know you can break that code. We'll open up a new warehouse, a new company. It'll run as smooth as silk. Yeah, you got yourself a deal. Good. What you see here is only the tip of the iceberg. Actually, Charlie occupies another eight floors. Charlie? C for Clarion, C for Charlie. Very impressive. Have you figured out yet uh, how Charlie activated the crane out at Kelso Manufacturing? Well, our lab people are still looking at that terminal connector. But while it's possible that it was the culprit, I'd bet against it. Dr. Lincoln, uh, is there any other way it could have been done? Well, it's a baffler. It would require access to the computer. That means that somebody would have to have the specific binary code for the Kelso program. Now, hold on. I can't make heads or tails out of that. Well, that's exactly what it is. Heads or tails in an infinite series of sequences. Here, let me show you. <clears throat> you see, each company has its own individual coded information which is stored in hundreds of tapes and packs and distributed throughout the unit. I would send a Greyhound running for cover. That's Charlie speaking. Oh, I guess I didn't get his message. Well, he's saying, who are you? Now, you answer by entering your secret number. That number is your password. If you have the right number, he says, oh, yes, I recognize you. What can I do for you? But if you don't, he won't talk to you. I see. In order to get anywhere, you have to talk his language. Exactly. And each program has an entirely different language. So you see what the odds are against anyone jumping the system. Oh, Mr. Elder, we were just on the way over to your office. I didn't expect to see you here. Uh, Mr. Jones feels that Charlie's untrustworthy. Oh, oh, oh I just uh, feel that possibly uh, he swapped stories with the wrong crowd. Well, you, you explained to Mr. Jones that all our programs are designed by independent programmers? Oh, yes. You see, the codes are secure even from our people here. They can't be broken. That's what the doctor said. But a few years ago, people were saying the same thing about the DNA molecule. Now chemists read it like a book. Well, Brian's right. The chances are less than one in a million. You see, you have to remember something, Mr. Jones. Charlie does not make mistakes. He made a big one at Kelso. There was a man killed. Dr. Lincoln says anybody could have done it if he were able to talk to Charlie. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave the science fiction to you gentlemen. I'm late for a meeting, excuse me.
Seems like a bright young man. The best math mind that ever graduated from Grover Institute. You suppose he could decipher one of those programs if he had to? Maybe, with time. I know if we had to do it, he's the man I'd put on it. Have you any idea what he was doing the night Kelso died? <laughs> Is that a detective's question? It's my line of business. Well, Mr. Jones, I'm happy to tell you that Ryan was having dinner that evening with me and my wife. He's a fine young man. I'm sure he Hi. How you doing? I just got your call. Why didn't you tell me you were leaving? Oh, I'm sorry, honey, but uh, I've been talking to the Burleson people for a long time now. When the opportunity came up, I grabbed it. It's a big step forward. But y you didn't have to leave. I, I would have spoken to someone here. Hey, that's not my style. When I come to you, I want to be on my own two feet. What, what would this mean to us? Honey, I'm changing jobs. It's not my life. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, darling. <laughs> Summers. It's Brian, Chuck. That private investigator Jones has been nosing around Clarion all morning. I think he's on to something. Hold on a second. Now listen, he can't cause us any trouble. Everything is clean. What about the warehouse? If you should trace those deliveries to the warehouse, he could get us. Not a chance. The warehouse is empty. Now, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll go down and double check myself after work. Yes. I'd feel a lot better. Now, just relax. I want you to concentrate on breaking the Burleson Code. Everything there is go. Go, go, go. All the way to Mallorca, right? OK, later. Mm. Your hunch was right. There were discrepancies between Kelso's deposits and their paid accounts. That's what I thought. That's the only way they could have been losing money. How many companies involved? Only one, Ventnor Machinery. But they made purchases of over $300,000. What I don't understand is how the computer indicated that their bills were paid. Was there an address on those deliveries? I'm sorry, I didn't have enough time to find out. The shipping should have it. I'm going to check into that. I thought you were going to buy me lunch. Take it out of petty cash. Alone again. up there, come out where I can see you.
<laughs> Chucky, now you promised me champagne. <laughs> now you know your beer girl can't drink anything but champagne. Now, beer girl, it's on its way. You keep it in gear and it'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are. I'll be right with you. Okay. Hang on. Somebody <laughs> Come in, come in. I've been worried about you. Listen, did you break the Burleson code? Uh, yeah, I got it right here. Okay, fine. We're right on schedule. I've opened up the new warehouse. You know who we are now? Stonehurst Industries. All right. Yeah, now wait till you meet the girls. You're gonna love them. Hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. Now, I want you to meet a very good friend of mine, Vera Alice. I want you to meet the genius Brian. <laughs> How are you? Oh, gee, cute. Didn't I tell you? Uh -huh. Now, you take real good care of my man here, huh? Mm -hmm. Vera and I are going to go get some ice. I want to fix you up a little drink. Mm. You've got plenty of ice. Well, honey, we defrost the icebox, huh? Mm, well, but you I, know... I don't want to hear about no, it. No, but... Ah, put me down, silly. <laughs> put me down, silly. Put me down. Put me down. Put me down. Put me down. Excuse me. <laughs> well, that Chucky's your sure card, ain't he? <laughs> yes, he's, he's very good with people. You're kind of shy, ain't you? No. Well, yes, I guess I am a little bit. You don't need to be. I mean, not around me. Oh. I mean, there's nothing I like better than a good party. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, that's very nice. You bet it is. Listen, you want to dance? No, no, I don't think so. Thank you. I bet you don't know how to dance, do you? <laughs> I'll teach you how to dance. I'll bet Food Alice can teach you how to do a lot of things. <laughs> Come on, dance with me. Come no. on. No, thank Come you. Come on, have a dance. No. Come on, it's fun. Please. <laughs> Come on, dance Please. with me. Come on, Please. and dance. I love to dance. Please, I don't want to. Well, what's the matter with you anyways? You think you're special or something? Look, I I'm sorry, OK? I'm very sorry. Well, now, how are you kids getting along, huh? I'll bet you're having fun. Your friend here is playing awfully hard to get. Where'd you find him anyway? Under a rock? Chuck, I need to talk to you. Um, honey, my friend here has been under a tremendous strain. Uh, Alice, come on, baby. Take us out by the pool. I'll be right out. Everything will be cool. Get my drink, okay? Everything's cool. Come on, have a drink. Hey, what is it with you? Alice is a very sharp chick. I can't talk to her. I don't know. I don't know. She's just... I thought we were risking our necks for something different, that's all. What do you want? Madam Curry in the middle of what we got going? If I could just talk to her, it'd be different. Oh, champagne's here. You didn't call. I thought we were going to go out and celebrate the new job, you know, and go to dinner. But I see you've already got other company. But I, 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 I can explain all this. Well, I don't, I don't think an explanation's necessary. Very foolish, that's all. I'm sorry if I've interrupted anything. Yeah, but Emily. <sighs> oh, well, it's... It's better this way anyway. It just clears the air. She was no use to us anyway, right? Hey, boom. I think I'd better go. Oh, Brian, what? The party's just getting started. No, not, tonight. not tonight. What about the coat, huh? I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Sure, tomorrow.
Fetner machinery? Yeah. I remember those two. They were two? Yeah, the one fellow, tall, husky, good-looking. Uh, Simpson, I think he said his name was, did all the talking. Said they wanted this warehouse. Do you recall the other one's name? Um, no. Didn't mention it. Sure wasn't the type you'd expect in that business, though. How so, Mr. Greening? You know, he seemed like he belonged more in his mother's apron string. Couldn't have been more than 30. Little guy. I remember he had a uh, funny way of uh, filling with his glasses every now and then. Exactly what way was that? You know, some people are constantly pushing them back in their nose like they're going to fall off. Well, he had a funny way, like a um, salute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. I'm afraid I know exactly what you mean. Well, look at this. I'm getting luckier than a five-footed rabbit. I was just on my way up to see you. Well, I only have uh, 20 minutes left for lunch, Mr. Jones. Perhaps later. Well, I eat very fast. Uh, what if I just tag along? I'll even buy. Oh, I'm sorry. I have some thinking to do. Yes, I'll just bet you have. Maybe it'd be to your advantage if we had a talk first. Unless you actually killed Mac Kelso. I don't know what you're talking about. I spent that evening with Dr. Lincoln. I know. Mr. Greening at the real estate office said you had a partner. My name is Simpson. Want to tell me his real name? Simpson? I don't know any Simpson or Greening. Mr. Greening is the man who rented you the warehouse. He described you to a T. All he has to do is verify that identification, and police will be here to pick you up. Even a young possum knows enough to tell when it's been treed. He even mentioned that. What? That way you have a fiddling with your glasses when you're nervous. Well, I doubt if I'm the only person with that particular idiosyncrasy, Mr. Jones. You probably aren't. But you're the only one capable of arranging that theft at the Kelso place. And with that goes a charge of murder. And I don't think that was your idea. If you have something, Mr. Jones, evidence, I suggest you take it to the police. Your friend tell you he tried to kill me yesterday? I thought not. I want his name, Brian. I told you I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I got part of it. I'll get the rest. Shame a talented young fellow like you spend the rest of his life behind bars. Think about that while you're enjoying your lunch. Sit down, I'll make you a drink. Why didn't you tell me you tried to kill Barnaby Jones? Who told you that? He did. He's got us, Chuck. He knows about everything. He talked to that man who rented us the warehouse, Mr. Greening. Did he mention me? No, not by name. <sighs> I should have killed him when I had the chance to. That's really the way you think, isn't it? Another murder means nothing. <laughs> I should have known this is where we were headed when you killed Kelso. Brian, you and I are in this together. Not me. Not me. I'm getting out tonight. Hey, you can't quit now. The first big delivery went out to the new warehouse today. Brian, Jones doesn't know anything about the Burleson operation. All you got to do is lay low for a couple of days, and everything we work for will come true. Like Mallorca? Hey, Mallorca, why not? Because it's a lie. Like everything else you put out. You use people, Chuck. You don't care. Like that girl last night, Emily. You just don't care. Wait a minute, little buddy. Don't you be saying something that you're going to be sorry I'm for. I'm not going to be sorry for anything, because I have made up my mind. It's like you said, it's we. We are going to go to the police together. Brian, use your head. If you don't go with me, I will do it by myself. I mean it. Hey. Now, I'm not going to blow the biggest chance of my life because some snivelly little four-eyed punk has lost his nerve. 
We'll see who loses his nerve when I tell the police everything I know. Let go, Chuck. Hey, listen, I'm not Shit, let go of you. you. Now you leave me alone. You discovered who betrayed my father? Two men were using the new computer system to rob your father blind. I got a line on one of them, but unfortunately, he died last night. Oh. Well, sit down. Do you recall ever seeing this man? Do you know him? I, I've seen him. Where? With Chuck. Chuck? Chuck Summers. He used to work for my father. But he couldn't have had anything to do with Mac's death. They were the best of friends. Besides, he was with me that night. It was the night of the birthday supper. Yes. Did he leave you at any time during that evening? No. Oh, wait, yes, he did. He went to the car to get my gift. But that couldn't have taken more than five minutes. Where can I find Chuck Summers? Um, well, we've broken up, and, and he no longer works for the company. I... He's at uh, Burleson Electronics now. Do you have a picture of him? Yes, I do. I'll get this back to you. From the look on your face, I have a feeling I may not want it back. Yeah, I remember this dude. Think back. Did you see him last Tuesday about 8 o'clock? Yeah, he took a briefcase out of his car and went to that phone booth over there. You sure? He was supposed to be picking up a birthday present. Right on. When he finished his call, he took the case back to the car and copped a small package. Then he took it inside. Didn't any help to you? I'd say you're right on. Anytime, my man. Anytime. What in the world is that? Betty, you may just be looking at the most complicated trigger ever used to kill a man. What? Dial that number. Oh, what is it? This is a portable computer terminal. But a gadget like this, Chuck Summers, could have killed Kelso without leaving the restaurant parking lot. How? You could have activated that crane from any phone booth like this. Then it wasn't a short found in the computer terminal. I don't think so. I think that Brian did that little piece of hanky-panky after the fact. And Summers has the perfect alibi. Not if I can tie him to the Kelso theft. I think they're pulling the same stunt over at Burleson Electronics. All I have to do is prove it. With a little help from your friend Charlie? 
Yes. Call Dr. Lincoln at that number. Tell him I need a search of all barrels and sales over the last few days. Tell him I'll be right over. It shouldn't take long now. We've programmed selectively to take accounts according to size and delivery techniques. We've encoded our invoice payments directly from the deposit account records. Should have your baby any second. How close will you be able to come? Closer than I did with Brian. I'm afraid I feel partly responsible. It's only human. Charlie's the only one around here who makes judgments without emotion. Thank you. Well, I see it, but I still don't believe it. Stonehurst Industries. Over $400,000 in sales mark paid, not a penny in the corresponding deposit account. Now, uh, this is the way to do business. I must say, this time, you, you boys really outdid yourselves. Hey, let's cut the talk. Now, if you're satisfied, I'll take the bread. Sure. Remember, there's a lot more where that came from. Uh, Mr. Griffith, I'm sorry, but this will be the last shipment. What are you talking about? That's right. Now, listen, I told you, I like you boys. Why, this is chicken feet compared to what it can be. Summers? Why don't you tell him you killed a chicken that lays a golden egg? Now, who's he? He's a private detective. We'll have to get rid of him. That's not beyond my experience. You two don't think I'm stupid enough to have come in here by myself, do you? Get out! Get out, Chuck! Get out! Put it down, son. I rarely miss at this distance. I told you to take it easy. I think you'll find the contents of these boxes interesting. Mr. Summers will fill you in on what you need to know, and if he won't, call me. I got a friend named Charlie. Charlie? What are you talking about? 